Hello, welcome to Show and Telling, the podcast. Normally it is um, our editor Mel, myself, Monty and Stacey. Stacey isn't here today though. We've got M. Rossiano. Yes, in the flesh. <laughs> Very excited to have you on, M. Thanks, Monts. Excited to be here. Very excited to be here. I've known you a very long time. We have known each other mm, a while now. Mm. And I knew who you were before I met you like years and years and years ago. Yeah. Your baby daddy kind of put me on the air. Yeah. yeah. Or, well, not really, but he well, was he would very and... much helped me. And very much an early day believer in my certain brand of whatever. Yeah, but I he am. still is. He's yeah. always been the biggest M. Yeah, Luciano is. fan. And it's not often that a heterosexual white male is the biggest M. Yeah. <laughs> So to have <laughs> Sam Kavanagh's tick of approval, you can't know what that means to me. And you know, I think he's super hot. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. The other day he actually came out and he only had his undies on and I went, Ugh. And he's I, hot. I thought, hot. That's just, good that you still think I, that. I'm so thrilled I did. My husband comes out sometimes just in stuff and I go, oh yeah, man. Great. Yeah, yeah but briefs or boxer briefs? Briefs. No, see. White fronts. No. no jockeys. No. Ooh. And it has to be the tight boxer brief. Nah, no, no, no. I love boxer. a jock. Really? Oh, I love a jock. I love a speedo. <gasps> On what? any shaped body, I love a speedo. Oh, I don't care what. You've got a dad body. You've got a hard body. I don't a care speedo. what your body. Oh, I love a speedo. My wow. husband's a cyclist and a surfer, though, so his glutes it's and hard, his quads yeah. are... You don't want to cover that up with any unnecessary material. No, and he would have beautiful shaped body. But if your body's not n- sh- nice Speedo shapely. Speedo it up, be proud. Oh, I love it. God. I love seeing little bits hang over the top. Oh, delicious. And, and um, hair. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love a hairy man. Tom Selleck, as you know now, confirm, I've so, you've heard a song I sing about Tom Selleck. Uh, he's my number one. Do you know what? When we were younger, oh my, my mum loved Tom Selleck mm. from Magnum P.I. And mm, she used to yeah. say when he came on the TV and my sister and I were there, there's my boyfriend. And mm. we would cry because we'd be like, no, <laughs> that's your boyfriend. He's, he's so still a very handsome Dude, man. there's oh, nothing. Still, three men and a baby. Yeah. Three Hello. men and a baby. Jesus. Remember the ghost in Three Men and a Baby? <laughs> yes. We <laughs> talked about this not long ago. No one talks about Three Men and a Baby enough, in I, my opinion. I Wholeheartedly right. agree. What happened to that? And then three men and a little lady. That was not yes. as good. Never, Never is. They're not normally no. as good. But I was going to go away on a girls weekend. And I'm like, we've got to watch three men and a baby. Yeah. And no so one was into good. it. What? So I know. I was like, I have to sometimes force still magnolias on people, which is disgusting. It's my favourite all-time movie. Is it my your- daughter can run all the way. No, <gasps> but I can't. I, can't. <laughs> I can run Shelby's all the way. Shelby's dead. Oh. I know. I mean, I get all of my life's like um, laughed with through tears. My favourite emotion. Oh, my God. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. I've never seen it. Are you joking? What? Never seen it. Uh, no. I know. What? I know. You haven't seen Steel Magnolias? No, because someone dies from cancer in it, right? No. no. Oh. Diabetic coma. Oh, Spoiler oh really? Alert, yeah. <laughs> <Don't> Shelby. <laughs> Drink your juice, Shelby. Drink your oh juice. My God. It you is, it, will. Honestly, everyone needs to see. You'll love it. Everyone needs really? to see. It's like it. five. It's essentially they're five sassy gay men. Yeah. Limpia Dukakis, the car, Sally Fields. Um, um, my ability, my personal tragedy will not interfere with my ability to do good Darryl hair. Hannah. Yeah, Daryl Hannah right. from Splash. Yes. yes, remember how good Splash was. And the guy from Picket Fences, the um, the Tom, Tom Selleck look like Tom, Tom Skerritt. Look, he looks like Tom Selleck. <laughs> so He's good. The dad. He's Dram, the dad. And hey, there's Weezer. You kind of look like Sally Fields. Yeah, I know. I get that a bit, Gidget. Do you? Yes. Gidget. I do look a bit like Gidget. Who did you get growing up that you look like Mel? Someone told me once Glenn Close. And I was like, really? Glenn Close? Yeah, I don't know if that was good in yeah. the 80s. No. It, it was <laughs> Fatal Attraction time. Yeah. I was like, really? Yeah, that's not a great comparison. No. But now good. No one really, but I do have a lot of people come up and say, oh, I know you. Or yeah. I've met you. I think I've just got a familiar face. Or you might have a familiar you face. You look a bit like Meryl Streep's daughter. Oh, really? Oh, I thought you were going to say joking? Meryl Streep. Yeah, Meryl Streep's daughter. Never seen her. Oh, she's a great actress. Really? She's an incredible actress. You would have seen her, you just don't realise. Oh. I can't off the top of my head think that way. Does but... she look a lot like Meryl? Yes. I love Meryl. Yeah, Meryl. I met Meryl. Have you met Meryl? Yeah. I've met Meryl. When did you meet Meryl? Let's oh, talk oh, Meryl stories. Sorry. And you, um, Mel, you start with your Meryl story. <laughs> oh, what's your Meryl story? <laughs> Tell me. Well, when I first watched Evil Angel. <laughs> <laughs> No, she well. was doing touring around for Mamma Mia, the first movie. Yep, you I must was have there done too. The yeah, yeah. We, but I was out in the like, um, was it at Melbourne Central or something? Oh, I, I can't to go remember. To that. She was on a screen. I didn't. Even, we, we were doing it via I, like she was in Sydney, I think, and her and Pierce and someone else were sitting together, and we were face to face, but not in the flesh. Oh, so you were in the flesh. Yeah, but it was like a million people oh, there, yeah. and I remember being really embarrassed being there until Kate Langbrook was there too, and I'm like, okay, not even <laughs> Kate's got an interview. This is good. And then as she walked past, because remember she played um, Lindy Chamberlain, and yes. she used to do that Aussie yeah. accent, and. Yeah. 
the only thing, I, literally, that I was doing Saturday mornings with Wright and Shelton at this time, so a long, 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 long time ago. Yeah. Mm. And um, she came out and I said, can you do an Aussie oh. accent? Oh, it was so oh, embarrassing. So. Did she and do the dingo, dingo line? Ate my baby. I think she said that. and then she, But she then she touched my face and said, you're a sweetie. <gasps> Mate, that's all you need. I thought that's Meryl Streep's touched my face. That's it. You've peaked. It really, it's all really, downhill from there. And do you know how many times I've told that story? She's she's incredible. I right, I've got a good story like that. Okay. First ever radio interview ever for ninety two point nine in Perth, mm. and um, I was sent to interview Shelley's Theron. Oh yeah. Oh. And I'd never. I mean, I'd been an Australian Idol. Then before that, I was a stay at home mother studying interior design in yep. Adelaide. That was what I was doing. And then all of a sudden, I'm sent to interview Meryl Streep. Right. I mean, okay, Shelley's Theron. So I arrived. I had a DAT machine, like an old one, and I didn't even know how to work it. They didn't send a tech with me. I got up there, I pressed record, and the batteries were flat. <laughs> I'm, I've got a one-on-one with Shelly Theron. She's literally opposite me, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't, I'm sweating. And oh. then she sent her security guard to buy batteries. Oh my god! Yeah, and we sat and we chatted, and he came back, and he sat and we had the interview. That's so typical. It's funny. I automatically assume because I'm not in that world that people like that would be assholes. Some of them are. It's usually you know, though the the the, the smaller the smaller celebrities. ones. Uh-huh. Yeah, that have got something to prove. Yeah. On the way up. Yes. yes, the big ones, the biggest ones are so chilled and kind yeah. and generous. Like when I, I interviewed Pink a year and a half ago and she was just I like. I saw that. That was so good. Just like sitting with your mate. But great. then you, I once sat with Snow Patrol um, oh. and and they sat opposite me doing this the whole interview, middle fingers up oh, on their really? face. Oh, you're kidding Whipper, me. Whipper, uh, Michael no. Whipley did it with me and we were Whipper and I were sitting there and they had their middle fingers up the <gasps> whole interview and we didn't know, couldn't call them out. because No. Was it couldn't prove it, but yeah. it was definitely. And I'm like, you're Snow Patrol. You've had one song. Oh, because we what is their song? Ah, um, if I lay here from Chasing Grey's Anatomy. Cars. They had one cool, song, and you know what they said to us? You can't mention the song from Grey's Anatomy. Oh, and I was like, oh, it was the only song mate. they had. You'd know it. Speaking of Grey's Anatomy, yeah. God, that was the best show it's ever. It's still going. Yeah, I gave up about 10 years ago. But, God, I love that show so much. Oh, so did I. And, re- oh, my God, this is hideous. This is a hideous story. <laughs> so remember the Black – was it the Black Saturday bushfires or was it yeah. Black Friday? Black Saturday. Black Saturday. Black Saturday bushfires happened, right? They were the, the most hideous, hideous things you've ever mm-hmm. – it was just awful. Mm. And we were starting our national drive show for the first week mm. with Ryan Whipper, your old mm. co-host, mm. and I. Mm. We had not really done much radio before. Or I definitely hadn't. Ryan yeah. hadn't. And so we had to go to the Burns unit of the Alfred Hospital. No. Of where. You didn't. The, yes, we did. No. And we had to broadcast live from no. there. No. And then, but who came in as a guest was Danny. Remember Danny from Grey's Anatomy? Remember he and the blonde girl? I don't <sighs> remember Danny. Oh my God, Danny was amazing. And he was in hospital and he and her married. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Catherine Heigl. Heigl, Heigl. yes. Chris, and they, what's her name in the show? I don't Izzy. Know. Izzy. 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 Yes, yes, Izzy yes, and yes. he got married and then he I do remember. ended up coming out. Yes. And in a, in the hospital, oh I my acted God. out that scene. In the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, my dear. Sensitive. What is wrong? I don't, you oh, know when dude, you look back at things you did? That's an amazing moment. Oh, my God. It was like we did not – we kept messing up. We kept saying to people, I'm so glad that your mum made it. And they'd go, no, mum didn't. I was like, this is – it was the worst thing to do in radio ever. Yeah, no, but it happens. It happens. It's like there's always that grotesque race to the disaster first. (laughs) So, like, today in Sunrise we'll go to where the miners are literally trapped and wait there. I'm like, guys, what if they're all dead? Well, how does this play out I for know. your live cross? Do you know oh, what, we're just going to cross to the cash, cash cow now. <laughs> <laughs> when those miners came out of that oh, mine, do you know what? I was, I don't know, did I not have a job at the time? Because I remember sitting, I was too. That was watching it Beacons on Hill television miners. when they came out and then they clocked out on the... Yeah, but do you remember oh, someone legends. very famous, a famous journo died. Uh, yes. um, Richard Carlton. Richard Carlton died. At the, yeah. at the scene. At the scene. He was so unwell but still went because of the pressure to be first. Yeah. That's crazy. And remember Foo Fighters wrote a song for them? Oh, yes. It wasn't a very good one though. Well, do you they, reckon- just, they just popped it down the album. I think Dave already had it written and he's like, ah, I'll just give that This will do. It's got digging in it. <laughs> Got some dirt references, but it's like that whole situation. I don't care for Sunrise being first on the scene, and no, you know, like no. I don't, that doesn't make me want to watch you. Yeah. That has the opposite effect on me. I don't care for that. No, hence doing a show from the Burns that unit. Is quite 
hectic. It was the only thing worse. Up. I think would be like live from a burnt down house. You know, like <laughs> oh my god, like the scorched earth still <laughs> smoking behind you. Can you think of anything that you had to do like oh, that? There's a terrible. Oh, yeah, do it. Just go say there. No, it wasn't. Say it. Okay, all right. I did a gig, a stand up gig. I got hired. No, I didn't get told anything about it. I was to go raise money for what I thought was firefighters. So I'm like, sure, I'll come and do some stand-up for some firefighters. Anyway, before they introduced me, they played a video package. And in that video package was a very, very sick woman explaining that she'd uh, been in China for experimental cancer treatment and that mm. the treatment hadn't worked. And that night that I was there performing stand-up at was in fact to raise money to bring her home to her family so she could die. Oh. What, 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 where was the firefighters involved? They, the, she was married to a firefighter at the oh, station. Oh, that was the link. So they play the video, they fade to black, and then they introduce Emraciano. I am in a litter <laughs> with like nipple tassels and like a oh headpiece, no. and this woman's just faded to black, announcing oh. that the experimental treatment hasn't worked. <laughs> and I walked out on stage, and I was like, I have never experienced anything like that in my entire professional career. Like, oh my god! And what do you say? Like, I, you say? I just said to them. I'm so sorry. This is so inappropriate. Oh. And so I turned it around and I managed to sing. I, I sang Flame Trees because, you know, they're firefighters. And I'm oh, yeah. about, but yeah. also for her and her family because I did manage to pick up that they were massive Jimmy Barn fans or something. So I managed to turn around. I didn't do any stand-up. Thank God you could sing. And I, thank God I could sing. Thank God I could sing. And I sang an acapella for her and there wasn't a dry on the house. Like we turned it oh, around. perfect. But initially I was like, you know what, guys, I'm so sorry. I just had to tell the truth. They didn't, I made myself completely, I just had, I, oh my God. I didn't know. This is awful. I'm a mother. I can't even imagine what it must be like. So I'm going to donate my fee tonight to you guys. I had no idea. So please have that. And and I'm going to sing a song. I know she's a Jimmy Barnes fan. And then like, thank God. But Jesus. That's for them not to tell Didn't you tell that me. is really you'd full just on. think you'd probably mention that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a firefighter fundraiser. Great, I'll come. There'll be poles. Woo, sexy. Yeah, it's hectic. Oh, no. Uh, no. Hey, and we, do, we did get you on because you um, have a new tour, the Rage and Rainbows tour at the moment. I do. One part of Rage, which Mel is feeling at the moment, tell is me. PMS. Tell me, Mel. Can I tell you? Oh, please tell me because I get it very hard. I actually think I... I need help for it. I'm not even joking. You probably do. I reckon I I, I do. get help already oh, for other stuff, right? Mate, but it's not too much help. I reckon four days mm. leading up, mm. I walk around either on the verge of bursting into tears yes. or killing somebody. Right. Yeah, you should get your hormone levels checked. Is I have. I've had and? my thyroid checked. Everything's fine. Your hormones are fine? Yes. Estrogen levels I thought are fine? maybe I was perimenopausal. Yes, that happens. Not. Okay. Did you I get thought that I wasn't too? and I got pregnant. I had that checked and actually when I went for an internal ultrasound, the sonographer's going, oh, you're just about to release an egg. You're ready to try oh, for another wow. baby? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You, that's a real thing. You might have a syndrome. It's actually mm. It actually really impacts my life. Same. I am hungry. Mm. I'm bloated like I'm six months pregnant. Yeah. My boobs, I sleep on my stomach. Yeah. The pain in my boobs and I just am so aggressive. Yeah, I know. It's I get it. out of control. It's PMS terrible. is so messed up. And I'm always confused every time it happens, though. Same. Like, I'm still shocked. I'm like, <laughs> why do I feel like this? Yes. yes. And then you realise oh. I'm 40 and I still, yeah. I didn't actually understand the cycle until I was trying to get pregnant. Right. Now. Oh, yeah. and you've like, already had two I kids. I had two, they're accidentals. I mean, they were wonderful surprises, but we didn't plan them. Really? Just Woo, yeah. Well, you were 21 with the first one. Yeah, that one. was definitely a fun surprise. It was a surprise. But Thank God you had her. <sighs> Nearly didn't. Like it was touch and go. Yeah, I, I bet. went. Well, I went so to young. the clinic. Wow. I was at the clinic. She knows all of this. I've written it in my book, so it's fine. This isn't my child. My daughter's not listening. Going whoa. Um. Yeah, and they called my name, and I just realized I, I, I just I couldn't do it. Didn't want to do it. <sighs> Thank God, yeah. Em. I know that's how close I, I came to not having that magnificent specimen that is my complete right hand woman and moral compass. There is something really special. My mum is really young, so I've got a sister who's five. I'm forty. My mum is 63 mm. and I've got a sister who's five years older. Oh, wow. And I've got a brother who's three and a half years younger than me. So by the time my mum was 27, yeah. she had all three of us. Yeah. And we are all so exceptionally close yeah. because she was so young. But I'm Italian as well. So they come out 35 yeah. wogs, really. They're born. <laughs> she didn't go to school. You know, yeah, it's right, totally right, right. different yeah. life. Yeah. But I'm like... Now I look and I'm like, she's only 63. She is. Got she's got the rest of her life. I know. That's when I went back at 40, um, everyone was like, are you sure? Your kids are ne you're nearly done. Like, you're on the home stretch, mate. 
Your yeah. kids are old. You can travel the world. You can go. And I was like, no. I'm but is that sure. what made you want to? What made you want to go back so far after? Because um, Odette is 13, is she? 12, 12. 12. Yeah, nearly 13. Um, losing the baby. So I got pregnant, surprisingly, with Ray, with my... Um, and so was that a complete that was surprise? A, oh, my God. I mean, right. we... And we were not trying... We, I have no birth control, but it had been 10 years, like yeah, right, 11 years. And all of a sudden I was in the studio. I was so dumb. I was with Harley and I realised that my period was late. And I said to him, my period's late. And because we're radio, we're like, why don't we go get a pregnancy test? Because there's oh no way I was pregnant. I said, there's no way. That shop is shut, guys. I am not pregnant. So we sent one of the poor producers down to buy a bloody pregnancy test. Mm. And he came back with it and I took it in the ad break because there was no way I was pregnant. Right, right. So then um, Harley and I are sitting there and before the last break. I'm holding the pregnancy test in my hand. Oh my and gosh. as we go live, the second line appeared. Oh my and God. we both looked at it and we're live on air. And he was like, oh. Wow. Didn't say a thing live, nothing. And we quickly ended the show and all of us were just screaming in the studio. Like I had, I, there was no way you I would have done so that. You would have been so shocked. Happy or delirium? I'm, just Oh, I was, all the emotions all at once. Because I was like, there was no, like, we, we did not. Think about having a third. I was like in my late thirties. My career was just taking off. I just got Sydney breakfast. Mm. Like it was all, and all of a sudden I was pregnant and it took me a while, but once I sunk in, it's just pure joy and elation. And then when I lost the baby at 16 weeks, I was so des like just devastated and mm. sad. And it made me realize that I did in fact want to experience motherhood older right, where yeah. I'm secure in my life. And, and I'm, and I, you know, I know what I'm doing. Cause the last two times I was just white knuckling it. I had no idea. I yeah. just started breakfast radio in Perth when I had Odie. So I was really off my head with everything and I got postnatal after her and the whole thing was pretty traumatic. So I wanted a chance to have this motherhood where I'm a bit calmer and older and, and more mature. Yeah. So yeah, losing the baby was when I realized I wanted to go again. But then that idea of going again, the women who go was back. Was it so scary? I don't. Yes, and I wouldn't. I don't think I could have gone back if this pregnancy didn't, you know, give me Elio. I just I see the women who have miscarried multiple times, and they're my heroes. They're they're mm. warriors. I don't know how a woman loses a baby and knows that visceral pain intimately, and then can just bat up again and mm. walk back out into the yeah. fire again and again when they lose. You know, some women lose pregnancy after pregnancy. You know, I had a woman contact me who'd lost ten before she got, ten. and mm. also quite late into the into the. You know, into the scheme of things. Well, 16, 16 weeks, weeks is quite late too. Yeah. But I, they wouldn't give me a birth certificate and oh. you don't get a funeral and like it was. So what is the. <clears throat> they put the baby into medical waste and I fought them oh and I, I brought it home. Oh my God. So we went to battle with the hospital over my fetus, um, mm. my baby boy and uh, in my mum who's terrifying, if you think I'm terrifying, <laughs> I am sired from the most terrifying woman. And um, she went to battle with the hospital and also my obstetrician was amazing and we were able, but they say things like, oh, what do you, what, what's the fetal container going to be? What are you going to carry him home in? So I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, can you swear on this podcast? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so like. You're Googling what oh, do people God, carry their babies home in because this is, just isn't stuff people talk about. No. One in four pregnancies end up this way. Yeah. Mm. But I felt like I was the only woman to have ever lost a kid. And then you got to go, okay, so where am I burying this baby? Yeah. And I'm scared, like, what if we move? Can like, I ask what do you – because I ask sometimes too please. many questions. But no. what do you – and did you look at the baby and did you what did you carry the baby home uh, We took him home in a – like a – Tupperware container. Oh my god, I was going to say like I'm a brand new a Tupperware, Tupperware container. And it's fucking and they so put, full on. For, um, they put f f formaldehyde in there, oh and they god. put the baby in there. And I was, um, I was sitting. Oh my god, I'm still oh. sad about it. I was sitting on the seat in the car, holding my baby in my lap. And my best friend Michael texted me and he said, how are you? And I just said, I am dead baby on my lap right now. Oh, <laughs> oh my like God. if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, okay, I'll be there. So he drove over. And um, so, yeah, I, I walked in and the, the most saddest I've ever been in my life is handing that container over to my mother to bury in a pot. And um, we, we buried him under a beautiful tree. And then that tree died six months later oh, <laughs> because God. life is fucked. <laughs> So then I was out there crying, <laughs> digging up the tree. And um, I made the mistake of opening the container because oh, I was M. just obsessed with seeing him. Mm. And it was just, ugh. I mean, that's something I will always see. Oh. And so we put him in the pot and, and, yeah, and then the tree died. So then we got another tree. So now I've got three backup trees. Oh, good. Um, so we've, re, we've reburied him and, he, and he's in a pot um, outside of my window. So when I'm holding Elio now, I kind of look at Ray and the two boys are, are with me. But, yeah, it's weird because when you give birth and they put the baby on your chest, you don't think about the guilt and sadness you feel about the baby that never got to lay on yeah, your chest. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a weird 
we, I didn't think I'd cry today. Jesus. Um, I'm a stand up comic. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a weird swelling of emotion yeah. of um, the, the pregnancy after the one that doesn't work and the baby that lives after the one that didn't. And um, yeah, so Elio's brought so much joy and he filled the gaping hole that was in my stomach. Yeah. But um, yeah, if, if Ray hadn't have died, then I wouldn't have got Elio. And, and you yeah. deal with those it emotions. Is, it's a really yeah, it's complicated. It is a really, yeah. really complicated thing to yeah. I lost a baby in, but at six weeks. And I know sometimes I say but and often people No, no, go, no, you don't quantify it. You lost yeah. a baby and that's it. Mm. Um, but I, when Arlo was born, I'm like, I wouldn't have you. And in a yeah. weird way, I felt really grateful that I lost that yeah. baby. And then yeah. I felt guilty that yeah. I lost the baby. And, yeah. you know, it's a, such a weird, because mm. it doesn't happen very often in your life. Mm. So you don't, you, you can't pull on old mm. memories and to your friends deal with and you it. don't sit around chatting about it no. either, do you? And no. then, but you do find once everyone found out I'd, I'd lost the baby, it's like, then you have all these women in your life going, yeah, yeah I've had miscarriage. I didn't know you'd had a miscarriage. And it's an automatic connection. Did mm. you find that? Yeah. Where it was like, wow, okay, you've been through that too. Mm. You've, yeah. But at the time, you honestly feel so alone. And that's why I wrote last year's show, Evil Queen. The whole show was based around miscarriage because I was 2am Googling fetal containers right. and I found this whole online community of heartbroken women. And I'm like, fuck, I've got to write something to bring this out into the light. Yeah. And to let them know they're not alone and to, to honour their babies, but also something for their partners because it's not just the woman that goes through the loss. I mean, it's very personal and different for the man and the woman. Um, you know, the, the, my husband didn't quite know how to support me because, you know, you feel like your body's betrayed you. And the term miscarriage, it infers that you've you've miscarried your baby, you've done something wrong, yeah. mm. and often you're the one who wanted it the most. So it's a terrible term to begin with. But yeah, I, I doing that show really. I can. I looked out into the audience when I talk about it, and all the shiny eyes and women clutching each other's arms and men mm. hugging their wives. And I knew, you know, that it needed to be done. But I'll never do that show ever again because it nearly killed me. Right. But the same thing with the Rage show. Um, I wanted to lighten the load for women who are, you know, hurting, self harming themselves by blocking down how they're really feeling. So, yeah, it's it's been a really hectic two years emotionally and I learn something new about myself every week and I'm like sometimes I get up I'm like not today yeah I've had today, enough <laughs> I don't need to know how I am failing in life how I'm a shit human how I need to be better but I just feel like once a week I will be reminded of my shortcomings it's quite unbelievable because I think people look at you and you're so unbelievably funny you are I, there's not many people truly who are more talented than you. You can sing, you can write, you're funny, you yep. and you you're very aware of yourself, mm. but underneath that too you often second guess yourself, oh, which time. is very very surprising from an outsider. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Oh my oh, god! Who's that? Me, I'm professional. That is so. But it's Scotty because <laughs> be. your baby's out walking baby. around with him. Where's my phone? What do I do with it? Is Put it him on speaker. I will. Oh no, it's not. It's some random number. Oh, don't oh no, don't answer. I hate random numbers. <laughs> I was on silent now. How professional. I'm a broadcaster. Mm. Um, yes, you were telling me how talented I am. <laughs> <laughs> but just the... Not I sure think of it's, myself. I yes. think it's really refreshing to hear, you know, because everyone second guess themselves, but somebody oh, when gosh. they are where you are yes. to still... I'm not where I need to be, though. But you're never going to be where you need to be. Oh, one day. Well, do you think we have it? See, I always am like, you know what? As soon as you get to where you want to be, there's going to be another mountain. It's no, just I have a never... goal. What's your end goal? I don't know. I just feel like I really want to be this whole kind of, I hate the word brand, but I just want to be this kind of go-to, like a relatable Gwyneth or a, you know. A, Who you've just come back to goop, I do love Gwyneth. Her. God, I do you love turned her. your back on I her for a while. I turned my back on her and her jade eggs up my vagina. <laughs> but, um, Which I think, did you write about those Mel on our I site? did. Yeah. Although I think. Gwyneth gets a really I love her. Hard oh, I, I love her now. I'm back. I sort of feel like the only thing I don't like about her is she, I think it was last year, she came out with this Christmas present list. Oh, I saw it. It's a bit untouchable. And it was like yeah, a mate, an Ottoman that was $70,000 yeah. or yeah, something. I'm like, Dull. be in touch with your readers. Yeah, but then Apart the readers that, are rich. If yeah. she wants to. I agree. Put a jade egg up, up there. Up there. Steam away. Yeah, I like her. Steam away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, I, I want to be this kind of source of entertainment and information and like just good shit for women to come and, you know, and trust and enjoy and connect and meet. So I'm trying to, the second half of this year is going to be about setting up a community and a membership and an idea that I really want to cut out the middlemen from my career. I don't want to rely on TV and radio yeah. and other people to control my destiny and my financial income and my creativeness. So yeah, I'm, my goal is to set up a platform where people are just direct members of me 
they pay like five bucks a month and they get access to everything for free basically yeah, yeah. Awesome. it's like they they just get the art they don't have to pay to come to things or so i really really want to take control but what of about your way. shows because you'll get quite a few people and then you won't make any money at your shows no but if i get enough people then that will pay for the shows do you yeah, know what right, i mean like right. and the live shows will be different in that you know i i have to pay the staff at the venues and i you know the live shows will be different but i'll do podcasts that if you're a member you'll come to the recordings of those for free yeah, awesome yeah um, people love that you'll get first yeah. access to my show tickets um you know you'll get first access to merch you'll get first access to everything and it's just a way to kind of take control back rather than waiting for people to give you jobs yeah and it's Mm. very disempowering after i lost my um breakfast radio job i was like i'm never putting all of my everything into somebody else's decision and that's why i started show and tell i'm like Mm. i'm not i can't do it anymore it's too soul destroying and it's often rests on one man who is not who i'm talking to anyway who's yay or nay my career well we've both spent a significant amount of our career being told how to be relatable by middle-aged white men yeah yeah a relatable woman yeah and they don't know yeah yeah. like (laughs) sometimes i walk and i've done a lot of radio this tour and I, um, this promo trial, and I walked into radio stations where the show is aimed at 35-year-old women mm. and there is only one woman within the production team and on air. Yeah. So it's like, crazy. guys. Yeah. It is. It's crazy, guys, isn't come it? come on. Because I think we're about, like, so the 3 p.m. pickup that I do is all women. And I think it's the only all women show on. Mm. It in, is. Yeah. On, on um, commercial Price radio. It is, I think. That. Yeah. But it's like, it's not offensive hearing women talk to each other. I know. I think that it, it's still that old school mentality of, no, um, women want to hear men and, and men want to hear men. It's women don't. Women are annoyed at women. And I'm like, I don't know. That's true. No, no way. But that's because men are making those decisions. And also our neutral gaze, our zero is male. Mm. Because for so long it's been men at the hierarchy and at the top end making the decisions. So we just think that's the norm. Mm. So I've been writing sex scenes for my book, which has been amazing. What do you mean? <sighs> what What do you mean? I'm writing my first fiction book. Are you? Mm. Amazing. Yes. There are a lot of sex scenes. Like, Can you please put so many in? I, I am. love. Oh, don't there's worry. Nothing it's going to be so I much sexy sex. Don't worry. I know. A fanny tingle. So much fanny tingles. And that's the whole point, right? So women, when you write sex scenes for women, I've been learning it's about how it feels. Yeah. Mm. When you when men when men write sex scenes, there's a lot of thrusting, there's a lot of explaining about what's going on, there's a lot of boob shots and like Right, yeah. But like say something like Outlander, which is one of my all time favourite shows, right. that is written by women for women. And the, all the sex scenes are so feminist and so sensual and everything you feel like you're feeling it in your bits. Because the most important, yeah, organ, the sexual organ in the woman is the brain. Mm. And for men it's their penises. Right. So you've got to really get all the synapses firing when you're running sex scenes for women. So yeah. Yeah, these the sex scenes. There's going to be like, there's going to be three big epic ones within the first book because there's, you've got to build up. You got Can to there be a up. couple of cheeky fingers? Oh no, and there's stuff cheeky there fingers, well. cheeky, all that kind of stuff. But she, <laughs> the series is called Hag. I'm going to write three books. Harper Collins are very kindly like just giving me carte blanche. Amazing. Wow. They haven't even read any of it yet. I'm th- two months late on handing it in, but anyway, oh, well. I've had a bit on. And so it's about Hag, and it's about this woman who she's married for five years, and then she, um, the night that, that doesn't work, the husband's selfish, da da da, and they they d- agree to have a divorce dinner, and they turn up, and that's where they're going to sign the papers and go off forever. And she ends up getting pregnant to him at that night, oh. and um, he goes off into the wilderness. She can't find. He's gone to find himself, and so she moves in with her two best friends. She's a massive fag hag, which I am, and um, so she's. And every chapter starts with a letter to her unborn child. And so the f- there's 10 chapters. And so the first five chapters are kind of recounting your everything up to the moment she gets pregnant and the next five are while she's pregnant and giving birth. Oh, so it's, she works at a very high-powered female website. Um, she's got a lot of gay men around her. It has been very cathartic. I've been able to awesome. put things in this book that I couldn't put in the autobiography <laughs> for legal reasons. Are you semi-spewing that Scotty didn't disappear to find himself? Nah, <laughs> there's a lot of... There's a lot of Scotty's traits in the husband, but not like Scotty's pretty good. Um, this guy's a complete asshole. And then, but a lot of the men I've come across in radio certainly have been melded together. Right. Uh, and some of the women I've come across working for websites and things. So it's been really. I mean, there's been so much to draw on. Holy shit! Right. So it'll be super relatable. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that'll be some good. So I'm really enjoyed writing that and the character development. And I mean, you know, I don't know if I'm doing it right. I'm just having a bash. But there's definitely going to be some. Very good sexual scenes. I agree. I love a good sex scene. Oh my god! I re- had, did you ever read Sugar Baby? Yes. Oh my god! I did read Sugar Was Baby. Was it Sugar Baby or I Sugar Daddy? Sugar Baby. I can't and it had the, the lips on the front. Oh yes. Yeah, 
Sugar baby. Sugar baby. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god! I remember being in Port Douglas with Sam and did he get lucky straight after? No, not really. Oh, I'm, really? It, nah. It always converts oh, no. me. Yeah, well, it me should too. convert. Yeah. But we were laying out by a pool, and oh, it was no, the very first me. time I'd read a book that made me feel like that. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm like tingling so like on. nothing yeah. else. You're like, yeah. oh my god, my swimsuit. I got it. I'm flowering like a lotus. I haven't been. I haven't been in the pool. <laughs> Oh, it's so it. great though. I agree. But and I even got a bit of a horn on from Fifty Shades of Grey. It's oh, not going to yeah. take much to get the women nah, going. I agree. No. And it is when you're there and you're just reading it. And men don't realise how easy it is. But we are very visual and very mm. like cerebral. So when we read something, we're able to imagine it's happening to our body straight away. Yeah. Like if I yeah. read someone's gone down on a woman in a book, I can pretty much feel that. Yeah. yeah. You know, so... Yeah. That's yep. going to be, yeah, that's all happening. Don't worry, guys. So I'm working on that. <laughs> Great. Yes. We, I know we have had you for a while, but let, we'll finish up in a minute. No, what about um sex post-baby? Oh, How long did you wait? Nah. Oh, God. So long. <laughs> <laughs> These five months. Have you done it yet? Because you're yeah, quite yeah, a yeah, hornball. I was. Was Ali a vaginal birth? No. Caesar. Caesar. And the girls? Both Caesars. Emergency Caesars and then planned because I couldn't go through another emergency Caesar. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, um, my babies are big and uh, my hips aren't very wide and I just don't dilate. My body does not yep. want to dilate. I dilated yep. one centimetre in 15 hours. Oh, God. Um, so then we just decided to book this one in. And um, so now my, v- my vagina is fine. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's I've had very three babies. Um, it gets pretty sexy, hectic there. though, after you've had a baby. I reckon it takes so long. Well, you still, I mean, even if you have a C-section, you're still like leaking all the time. All the yeah. whining coming out. And your out milk and, out of your boobs oh, and everything. Like you've got a Ferrari, but you can't drive it. Like I yeah. never have tits. Oh my God, yeah. And now I've just got this massive boobs. It's got, cannot touch. It's like, there's no go side for him. Yeah. Because yeah. out of his eyes. Yes. So, uh, sex has been hard in that um, I'm just tired. Who's? I'm so tired. And, and the I don't baby, even have I co sleep with the baby. So, I mean, in the bed, he's in a co sleeper cot next to us. So, how good are those little things? They're the best. Oh my god, they didn't have them when my babies they were did born. Not no. for me either. Because you literally just roll them into your bed, right? Feed, and they don't get to wake up properly. Because if they're in another room, they they get they get so wound up, it's hard to get them back to sleep. Yeah. But in a co sleeper, I just unzip him, roll him in, feed him, and back in. He doesn't even wake up. Amazing. He just wakes up because he's hungry, and then back in. But yeah, no. I mean, we've yeah. I mean, we're back on the horse, but not like we were. <laughs> well, not also not with a baby in your room. Nah, baby's in the room. Oh, I no. Nah. And I'm tired. I could never. I could never do it when my kids are in the room. No either. way. No way. I, I had friends did it once while she was breastfeeding, and he did oh, it no, behind that's, her. That's okay. That's that's a, different. a whole thing. I thought that too, and she's like, "What?" I'm like, "No, mate, that's sick." No. Look, it's not. I don't know if it's sick. It's sick. I mean. It could be said that you're the one sexualizing it. Yeah, but I'm not. I know but she's not is, getting off on the kids sucking on her boob, but still, like, oh, I would have to wheel my boys out that of the is, room. To be breastfeeding while someone is coming in from behind is a scenario I have never considered. No, because you would My brain goes to some pretty. Yeah, no, I know it's shocked. And I'm surprised she told you. Well, she did, thinking I, I'm a sick pig as well i'd be you're not a sick pig i'd be like you yeah, leave cool. people to believe you are but i know you no know. She's, she's not she's no. a stickler she's a traditional stickler i'm pretty straight no, she, yeah. she, yeah. she lets you think she lets you think oh yeah, yeah mate you get dead rough whatever i'm not judging and then boom yeah missionary once every fortnight <laughs> that's it okay thank you you got five minutes <laughs> no it's like scott's very hot i find my husband very attractive We've been together 19 years this year it's i so still lucky. find him very still attractive him yeah, he's mel's cool. husband's just gone through a full Body makeover, kind of, hasn't he? He turned 40. Why? Asshole. I'd be questioning that. No, no. It, you know what? It was the 40 have thing. have a sip of my tea. No, no. He turned 40 six months before I did. Yeah. And I think he just, he'd said to me, I really need to start looking after myself. Yeah. I'm like, yep. And I'm always, on Monday I'll start, on Monday I'll oh, start. Oh, yeah, babe. Monday I'll start. Monday never comes, right? Okay. By Wednesday. We're ge- gearing hard. up for the next Monday. Oh, it's too hard. Right. Anyway. <laughs> Friday I'll have a wine. I'll start Monday. Yes. So um, for his 40th, he was like, I want to get a gym for the garage, like a full gym. I'm like, okay. So he's been there for ages and he looks really good. And I don't want to be resentful. He looks hot. He looks amazing. No, he's probably he watching right now. Can't be hotter than you. It's not okay. Well, if no. you're accustomed to being the hotter of the two, which I'm gathering you are, uh, it's tough. It's a tough transition no. when it flips. Do you know what? 
I was mm. a long time ago. Yeah, it's tough. Now it's tough. it has totally. He's quit. very good now because men. I think men sort of age better. I reckon oh, men age better, and we also do. accept it more. Though you know that we've been conditioned to accept yes. an aging yeah. man because we don't see a lot of women are kind of erased from the telly yeah. advertising in the in the middle third of their lives. They just herd it off to the oh exotic God. marigold hotel. Yeah, and like there's this like Kim Kim Kardashian and Dame Judi Dench. There's no middle ground. Well, this is something I'll just quickly <laughs> mention. I've been deep diving into all the Madonna interviews. Oh, oh yeah, right, right, right. She's my mother, just saying. You're going to want to slap me across the head for this, but... Don't. If you... Hang on, hang on. If you're going to put on. a limit on her sexuality... No, you need to let you know, me... eye patch. You need to let me get no, out what I've got to say, say, though, because it. it's a whole spectrum. Oh, Jesus. When I first saw her, yeah. I was like, God, you're three years younger than my mum. Like, oh, yeah. Said, hang on. Okay, I'll let you... But we're coming around. Okay, good. Okay. No, no, but no. then I thought, why do women become invisible when they get older? Oh, I've got a whole 30 why, minutes of my show why, about this. Why can't she be the way she, that's her? Correct. Why is she not sexual anymore because she's 60? She doesn't die. Her vagina like, doesn't the die. The only thing is I noticed I was really pissed about her fucking gap's gone. Oh, has it? Oh, yeah. She has no gap in her teeth anymore. I'm like, that was your trademark, mate. Oh, your gap. The grills. Oh, no. Oh. She was on Graham Norton. <laughs> And she was speaking like this. She's done. She because she had a grills on. Don't feel bad. Mm. No, I do feel bad for her because I feel there's a lot of pressure for her to look like that. She looks ridiculous. Yeah, but that's the only pressure she's putting on herself. Yes, and she still mm. does, even though she's had so much stuff done to her face. She still looks her age. She's luminous. She's just nah. I don't even think she's luminous. She's I not. Do. Oh my god. She. You know what? If Madonna was got, if Madonna Sorry. was walking down the street no, no, no. on the other no, side no, of the road, I would good. not cross the road. No, can I tell you? She looks. Good in the oh, flesh. Of course, she would look amazing. Her she body looks loads. amazing. Yeah, I think. she doesn't know how she's combated the hands and the neck, but she has. Ha- she has. Mm. Jeez, that's where I'm yeah. not combating on the neck. Me like, oh, oh god. god, it's like someone's oh. jizzed on my chest. Oh, it's oh. so bad. You know that horrible, like <laughs> claggy Crapey. look. Crapey. Yeah. Crapey. You Crapey. Know? Crapey. Crapey. Because you know now when you lay on the oh. side, like when you wake up, you got like those sleep lines on oh, your chest. The rear view mirror. I've once read that Halle Berry put gaffer tape between her chest. To stop that from happening. Oh, really? Her boobs are magnificent. She is magnificent. Monsters ball. You know, Madonna can. I just. I see that and think, you go, girl. I mean, that excites I know. me. I don't mind. I'm planning on aging so disgracefully. Like, <laughs> you've really touched a nerve with me in that I've decided that I need to take a run at being hot, finally. You know? You're looking like, the best you've looked. Yeah. I think you yeah. are too. So, yeah. like, I'm really committing to, okay, this is it. I'm 40. I'm rolling the dice. Yep. Um, so, so what are you going to do? I'm going to like, I'm growing, growing my hair. It's going to be a little bit longer just so I've got a bit more options. Um, I'm going to, I'm now just allowed to start back exercising. I always love exercising though. That's not hard. Yeah. So I'm going to get super fit. Mm. I'm going to like get like strong. I want my body to be strong because it's so weak after having the baby. Um, um look, I'm probably going to get a little bit of a little toxy, a bit of a Botox around my eyes. Yeah. Have Absolutely. you done anything yet? Not yet. No. Never. Oh, I know. Oh, you don't need to yet. I, I just a little bit, just a little bit. Just see what it's like. You know, well, I don't judge anyone. Do you do you? Whatever. Oh, God, mm-hmm. I hate saying that. You do you. It's the worst You do thing. you, boo. I hate you do you. Um, But <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I want to be a fat Winkle, old woman. Have you seen Batty Winkle? No. Who's that? Follow her on Instagram. She's this incredible lady. She's like 85 years old. She's the one who does the split thing. She dresses like, like me. She dresses like she's 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mini skirts, whatever. Pictures of her. Full makeup. She's just this. And I look at her and I'm like. Why aren't women like this? Why do you get to a certain age where you think, oh, it's time to cut my hair cut into hair, a you gotta have you know, crop and That's the whole thing. wear a cardigan? I do a whole bit in the show about how the only time you see women in their 40s to 50s is like for Nicole Kidman, Neutrogena, SK11, Kate Blanchett. Like, yeah. But to be honest, like the women behave the worst and have the most fun after 40. Like I've been to a day yeah. on the green. I've seen that shit. Those women are <laughs> off their tits. Like they are, it is a day on the green, guys. It is a day on the green. And like I was once at a day on the green and I stood at the port and it was like a John Farnham extravaganza thing and I watched a woman piss her drop crotch seed linen jeans in front of me and her friends pointed and laughed and then they oh walked God. away because they didn't need to use the toilet anymore and it is the most gangster thing I've ever seen yes. in my life. Yeah. And you know yep. what? And I'm just like, I want to just put my business idea out there right now. <laughs> I want to start a Sunday day club, not at a bar, but at a dares. 
Oh, oh that's a great I'm idea. Dead. Mothers, my pintos in Manchester, <laughs> shit is going to get fucked oh up. Oh, my God. Right? Oh, my God. Do you know how much idea. money I spent at a day the other day? At, what about scented candles? New obsession? Oh. I can't. I will oh. spend $80 on a glass with something that smells like cigar and fig, but I will buy <laughs> the meat at the supermarket with the yellow sticker on it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, God, eight bucks for a kilo of mints. That's a bit dear. 70 bucks for a candle? Sure. <laughs> And the, but don't try and sell me the wick trimmers. That is a con. Oh I'll just use the scissors. God. I trim my pubes just yeah, in the shower. Is thanks. That? I didn't even know about those Shoot. wick trimmers. Oh, I've got my scissors here. Yeah, Psh, done. Oh, don't need to trim. You've got to trim wick your candles. Trimmers. You've got to trim them before you oh. light them again. Did you Otherwise know you get, about that? No, I didn't. No, not. you should. Otherwise, you get the black smoke on the side of it. It looks. Do you know how bad good. I am? You guys gave me a candle, I reckon, two years ago. You haven't lit it. No, I have. I've been lighting it. But I don't have one Wait, of those how do you long... still have it? I go through a candle a week. No, my husband hates the smell of candles. I don't care for your he husband. He hates it. No, I... <laughs> I don't care for him, sir. <laughs> right. Let her have a candle. You got hot. What has she got? <laughs> Jesus. Selfish. Do you know what? He's probably watching right yeah, now. I bet he is. Yeah, well, I guess he's going home and lighting a frigging gardenia candle glass house tonight. But I don't even have one of those, you know, the, the long, long ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know Just what I do? Just tip it upside down with a mat. Ah, piece of spaghetti. Yeah, I've done oh. spaghetti. That's good. I'm happy yeah, I didn't know that the wick um, cutter, though, was to stop the black. Yes, yeah, to stop the black okay. and also it gets a bit, you know, it gets a bit fluffy and... Just cut it. I yeah. just, like I said, the scissors I trim my pubes with in the shower. Mm. And you also need the snuffer. No. No, who uses no, the s- No, I'll the tell you what you do. The snuffer stops the black. <laughs> <laughs> Just and then your house smells like birthday cake. No, you need the snuffer oh, mate, to stop the Oh, mate, my house smells like dog piss, baby shit. Oh. I'll take the friggin' smoke smell, thanks. Oh, my God. I've got three dogs good. and three kids. Yeah, but Ugh. your your baby is divine. It's next perfect. level stunning. He's so yeah, cute. He's so cute. He's, no, he's so cute. Like, he really is. I've got friends now who go visit other friends and like, isn't he, she the most beautiful baby you've ever seen? And then, like, they're like, oh, well, yes. <laughs> Have you seen Em's baby Elio? <laughs> Let me what? show you a picture. When my baby, when cute. my son came out, my daughter was beautiful from the minute she was born. But when my son came out, oh. that first night, I, I like I, I saw him. Oh, he's beautiful. No, and then you look back and no, go, no, not even look back that night. Oh, I that just fed Jesus. him, and I was no. This is gonna make you hate my husband even more. I was holding him, and I'm like, oh, doesn't he look like my daughter's name's Dom? I'm like, doesn't doesn't he look like Dom? And he goes, my husband goes, do you think his eyes are a bit far apart? <laughs> and I'm like. Oh, how dare he? Don't say that. But now I look back at pictures, I'm like, they were like here. Like the legit first thought I had when I held Baxter was, this has got to get better. (laughs) The first thought. Months. I'm not even kidding you. Not like, oh my God, I did it. I was like, oh my God, this has got to get better. It was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I was besotted with all three. And now I look back on some pictures and go, oh, yeah. Yeah. You had your goggles on. You regret putting them up on social media. (laughs) Usually like a little old man sucking on a prune. But no, no, he came out beautiful. Oh. He's perfect. He's yeah, the but most... C-section babies are perfect. A, oh, stop, don't get into the C-section vaginal conversation. No, they, they come out with round, the head. beautiful hair. There's a difference no, with the because head because my other C-section baby was rammed down my birth canal oh, for yeah. so long. She came out yeah, with the no, cone heads. Yeah. So take that. And she okay. was yellow from the meconium. It was... It gets better. Oh. And I still thought she was beautiful. Oh, she looked God. like a, um, a minion got caught in a frigging drain. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Stunning. Look at my baby. And I took a photo on my Kodak and I got it developed at the chemist and I sent a copy to everyone. Yeah. And you caught, oh my God, that was so much more. Oh God. Mm. My God, we had, we had, no, we didn't get through anything we wanted to talk about to you, but we did so well, didn't so we? Oh, Fun. Man. Oh, look, it's been a roller coaster. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God, Christ. such a delight. Hey, Emerald Shiano's show, The Rage and Rainbows Tour. It's, Tickets are on sale now. Yeah, so we sold Melbourne and Sydney. We've just added second shows in Melbourne and Great. Sydney. Please come along. Um, but we're going all around the country. It kicks off on July 19th. And um, please come so that my family I may went eat. to one of your first stand-up Oh, you need shows. to come to, like, now oh, and I'm see how come. far I've come. I can't wait. But there, it was a room of about 80. And Butterfly so Club you went to, I think. Tiny. Probably. It was in the city and I remember I was so rock. I'm like, oh my God, this is sold Same out. People. Like, and now you, it's crazy. Thousands. I know. It's only been it's about six years where I've gone from like Melbourne Comedy Festival with 20 people under the stairwells at the bloody forum to Hamer Hall. 
Unreal. Wow. It's pretty full on. It's I know, so I yeah, great and so much fun. The it's show's going to so be fun. hectic. So all of your songs are on Spotify. Yeah, all the originals are up that I wrote with Kate Miller Heike. Um, there's one called Rage Like a Motherfucker, which all great. women are currently very much relating to. I'm getting videos of a lot of screaming after they've dropped the kids off. Oh, um, awesome. And then, yeah, 39 Geriatric Pregnancy. There's a, a song for all sons called The Kind of Man I'd Like You To Be. And then I've got one more coming forged in the flame, which is kind of like a big vaganthem, vagina anthem. Great. Um, which the dancing vagina. Vaginas will appear after I sing that to Journeys. Um, Starships, nothing's going to stop us now. So it's Great a big song. production. I'm it's shipping so it. I'm oh trucking a set. <laughs> like it's mental. Oh my gosh. But I'm so you proud of it. You think you are Madonna. I, I'm, I am. You're the Aussie Madonna. I am. I wrote her a letter legitimately when I was a kid saying, I think that you may have given me up for adoption. <gasps> not, that's a true, not a word of a lie. Well, also because you were telling, you probably did convince yourself. I did. And also she came to Australia around the time that I would have been conceived and then her first punk band was called Emmy and that's what my family call me, Emmy. So, like, I really convinced myself. Oh, my my God, you (laughs) guys. I wrote her a letter proper. So I think think I'm your daughter. Like, if I could have written it in my blood, I would have. Oh, you I've seen her. I dressed as her and went to her show. I've seen her live twice and two years ago I dressed up and my two best gays went as backing dancers. And we got of the, course they did. The no, guys, you're the backing dancers. No, they took it. They had to wear masks as well. Oh, they understood. God. I had the wig, the whole thing, <laughs> and I was like front row and it was I did the VIP experience. I had a lanyard. It was the greatest night of my life. I love her. Wow. And she's everything. She plays so many trails. People forget. Yeah, Go she back really and do Yeah, research. they do. They do, but still yeah. I wouldn't cross the road. Do your research. I'm so sorry. She's amazing. Head to emerilciano.com yes. get your tickets from there also you probably already follow M on socials yeah, but emerilciano yep. also we're show and tell um, online or ours and um, yeah that's us for now thanks thank Em you, thank you thank bye you, thank you.